Bam! As Emerald would say, let's kick it up a notch. Let's add a sound effect. I only need one sound effect. I'm going to add it to one of my slides on my presentation just to show that I can do it. So right here on the right-hand side, you will find your sound effect link. Let's click on that and uh, explore the website, shall we? From this site, I'm going to try to find a sound effect that works for me. I could sample these out here. I could sample these over here. You know, I'm going to find something that goes with one of my presentation themes here. So here I've gone through my list and now I'm going to select a baby's laughter. I went through a few of this is what I want. I click on play. <laughs> I hear the sound. I say yes, that is in fact what I would like to have playing on my presentation because I am a funny person and it says it right here. I'm hilarious. So I'm going to add the sound effect to my second slide. So to do this, select download. Click download and then download now. Click on download now. It either shows up a couple different ways. If I'm in Safari, it shows up like this. If I'm in the current form of Firefox, which it might change, uh, you know, it shows up in the downloads window up here. Okay, but it also has the same uh, magnifying glass that the download window for Safari had as well. And of course the current form during the course of this movie obviously for Google Chrome is down here. So I hit the download now, it shows up down here and I'm going to uh, try to open it in the Finder. So I'm going to say click here and show in Finder. Any way you look at it from uh, Google Chrome to Safari right here is showing it in the Finder right here and also in uh, Firefox from the downloads window right here I'm going to show it using the magnifying glass right here and it's all showing in the downloads folder so no matter how I downloaded it it shows up into the downloads folder uh, each one of my web browsers downloaded the file so it just renamed it a different way and that's fine uh, to get into the file, it'll be automatically selected when I use my magnifying glass to open it up. It'll automatically select it in the Finder window. So I find the Finder window, I open it up, and the zip file just expands it out. It shows me the folder that has the sound effect in it. And I'm looking for the MP3. So I found the MP3, I take that, I drag that to my keynote presentation, I drop it on. Now it shows me a picture of a speaker here, but that is not going to show up when the presentation plays. That is a ghost right now. It shows me that there is a sound effect so that when I'm editing, I can go through and see, okay, I want to select uh, you know, this audio clip and do something with it in the inspector window, like loop it or do something else with it. But uh, when I actually play the video, it's not going to show up. And I can select just parts of this audio message, I can loop it, I could start it on the click, uh, you know, I could repeat it, I could do a whole bunch of different things with it, but that's what that image, it allows me to see what I'm selecting so that I can work with it, but it's not actually going to show up when I play my presentation. So I want to sample the audio clip, see what it sounds like in my presentation, I just double click on the speaker. <laughs> double click on it, it plays, it shows me that it's playing. And if I do anything else to it, I want to chop it down or, or you know, make it smaller or whatever I do here. When I double click on it, it'll play just that selection. <laughs> and once again, I really only need one piece of sound effect on the whole presentation, and that's good enough for me. So put one sound effect on, and you're set. You want to kick it up a notch? Of course you do. So here's what I'm going to tell you. You could also use these audio messages and build them into the project using the Build Inspector right here, just like you did with your uh, bullets down here. So it shows you that the bullets have the build in, and that's by the bullet, right? Okay, fine. But then also, this audio message can be built in in a select order. So you could just, you know, start audio would be the only function that you have here, but you could put it in an order to be one, two, three, or four, depending on how you do this. Now you could also build in your images if you'd like, right? So you have uh, the words come in and then 
you would say, okay, I want my, my image to come in, but I want that to come in second. So it will be the words come in first, order number one. Then you'd say number two, order two will be the picture, and then order three will be my audio message. You want to get even crazier? Of course you do. So here's what you want. You want the word funny to float in, then the audio message to go off, then very good looking to float in, intelligent to float in, and then the picture to float in. Right? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I need to create another window here to have, because the order is not going to work because the order is taking these bullets as a group. So I need to create a new group. So what I'm going to do is here is duplicate this. So I Command D, or I go to Edit Duplicate in the menu, up top like that, right? And then I'm going to strip this one down so that it's just funny. Okay, I hit Delete, Delete. And now I'm going to take this bottom one here and take away the word funny. And then So now, by hitting delete, and I have very good looking, intelligent, and funny is its own its own uh, window here. So now I can say funny. I want the order to be number one. Then I want the audio message to be number two, but I gotta get this box out of here so that it doesn't interfere my audio message. I click on the audio message and that could be number two. Then the rest of the words here, uh, very good looking and intelligent, will be number three and of course the picture over here will be number four. So one, play the laughter, to float in, and then four will be the picture to show up again. 